Hello, my name is Miss Sasha. I'm a teaching artist in the PACE program with the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today, we are going to make patterned cats. Um, our inspiration will be American artist Laurel Birch. Um, the supplies that we're going to need are going to be pretty simple. You can find them around your house. Um, you'll need a piece of white paper, some construction paper in assorted colors, including green, assorted crayons, including black, glue, and scissors. Now would be a good time to pause your video and collect your supplies. And when you return, you just have to press play. Now that we've gathered all of our supplies, let's get started. Um, Laurel Birch was an American artist, and she used animals for her inspiration for a lot of her artwork. She'd paint them with a multitude of patterns, lines, shapes, dots, and doodles. Um, the animal that we're going to focus on is going to be the cat. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get our white piece of paper. I went ahead and taped mine to the wall. But once you get your white piece of paper, you're going to fold it in half to make a line down the middle and the other way so that we have a crisscross on our paper just like mine. Let me show you. Uh, this little grid will help us to uh, draw our cat in the middle of the paper. So here we go. <clears throat> We're going to start by adding our border, which is going to be on the edge of our paper. So I'm going to pick a few different colors and I'm going to cut a strip, probably not much wider than like my thumb. I'll go ahead and cut a strip of yellow. I um, think I'll cut a strip of orange. You can pick any color you want, whatever color construction paper you have hanging around. Now I'll do a blue one and red. <clears throat> so now that I have these four little strips of paper, I'm going to get to uh, pick any line or shape or I can take a line and a shape and make a pattern. I did this one as crisscrosses and straight lines. This one has zigzags. This one has triangles and circles. And this one has wavy. Anything will do. Let me get these up on the board. Here we go. And one more. All right. Um, grab your black crayon. And go ahead. I think on this one I'll put circles. I'll do just shapes on this one. You can do triangles, rectangles. Uh, these are geometric shapes. Some of these are organic shapes or shapes found in nature. So any of these shapes will do. If you prefer to do a line, we have straight, wavy, zigzag, curved, dotted, and dashed. <clears throat> and any of these shapes or lines you might find around your house. You might find while you're riding in the car with your family. Uh, you might find in your backyard. So any of these will do. Laurel Birch used tons of different lines and shapes and designs, patterns, dots, doodles to create her cats. Now make note that she also did other animals and other styles of um, art as well. But since we're going to have a focus on cats, I thought this would be a great picture. All right. Here is that one. On this one, I might just do a wavy line. You can always come back and add another line or shape in your little strips of paper. I always like to add a lot of detail to mine. Detail is just like enhancing what you're drawing. Um, let's see, I'll go ahead and do a simple zigzag, up, down, up, down, up, down. You also might find these lines in numbers or letters, like this might be Z's, W's, M's, all kinds of things. And this one, let's see, I will do, um, I'll do a pattern this time. I'll do a circle, 
triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle, and circle. <clears throat> Perfect. Remember, you can always pause your video um, if you need a little bit extra time to get caught up. Um, once you have all of your strips, what you can do is grab your glue. If you need help with glue, ask your parent or a sibling. And just do a light little line of glue around the edge of your white paper. It doesn't have to be a lot of glue. All right. And you'll notice that my strip is a little bit longer than my paper. That's okay. I'm just going to start out at the corner. And then when I get over here, I can go ahead and cut it. Or you can leave it hanging off the edge. Doesn't matter. They can crisscross off the edge. Here's the uh, next one. Good. I'll cut a little bit off. Here's my blue one. A little bit off. And my yellow. Cut that off. Right there. Doesn't have to be perfect. They can overlap a little bit. All is good. <clears throat> Great. Let's go ahead and start our colorful critter. Um, just so you know that the uh, feline are, you know, our little feline friends are lovable. They all have a lovable personality. It makes them a very special pet. Um, cats and humans have been interacting for over 10,000 years. So there's lots of cats around. They've been around for a very long time. So let's go ahead and get started on our kitty cat. You ready to start drawing your cat? I am too. Here we go. Let's start over here in this top rectangle, okay? In this top rectangle, I want you to go ahead and make, you can start at the top if you want, come down and don't go past this line and do a bump and a bump. You see, I did not go past this line and I did not go past this line. <clears throat> bump, bump. Go ahead. It's like a W. All right, and now make a diagonal line and a diagonal line, but don't connect them. Good. Now let's make a horizontal line that goes across. Perfect. Awesome. At the bottom down here in this little bump, make a little curved line. You can put a little, a little one in there. That's for his little tongue. Great right above it on this little point. I want you to make the letter V. Got it? Now let's make a tiny horizontal line, which now we're gonna have a triangle. Funny, that's one of our geometric shapes. You'll talk about a lot of shapes and lines in the math class sometimes. You might hear about um, all those different shapes. <clears throat> Now above our triangle, let's make two vertical lines that just go up and meet that little horizontal line that makes the bridge of the cat's nose. This is his nose. And then in here you can put another tiny triangle. If you don't have room, you don't have to put one. That's the inside of his little ears. Okay. And you see at the top of our triangle right here, and this kind of makes a little circle. We'll go from there and just kind of close it up. It, it makes where the, his whiskers will come out of. Look, close it up. In there, you can put a few whiskers. You can put as many as you want. Cats use their whiskers to know their space, know if they can fit into something. It's like their little ruler, just like their tail is for their balance, okay? And then you can fit little eyes in there. I just do a big curve line from the nose to the side and a curve line under there. I do the same thing on both sides because they're symmetrical. Symmetrical means the same on both sides. And you can put a little eye in there. 
I'm using my black crayon so it would have a nice fine edge. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to, but that's my, my suggestion. All right, great. That wasn't too hard. Now we have the cat's head on our paper. Let's go ahead and add his body. Now, Heather Goller did her cats in lots of different positions. Let me show you. <clears throat> See? We're kind of doing it like this one and like this one, only we're going to have our tail that's going to come up around the back. So you can do them laying down, standing up. She did them all different positions, but do notice, look at all of her lines, shapes, dots, doodles, patterns, all of that in her cats. They're very colorful, so they don't look like your real house cat because we're using our imagination to fill in the spaces with all these different options, line shapes, all of those. All right, let's do the cat's body. From his little cheek, almost down to the bottom, but staying in this rectangle, do a vertical line that comes down and has a little bump at the bottom, almost like a hook, right? This is going to be his foot, so don't make it too tiny. It's about halfway in this little rectangle down here, okay? All right. And I'll make this line a little taller. All right, so now we're going to start up here by his eye. We're going to curve around in this rectangle all the way down and come right back up here on that line. Watch. I'm going to curve all the way over here, almost touching that edge, almost touching the bottom, and I'm going to come up right here. I have a space. I didn't connect it. We need another foot. Okay? You got it? That's like the cat sitting down. That's his back. This is his little spine right over here. And let's connect it by adding another little foot. Watch. Two feet. One, two, and his back. We don't have his tail on yet. If you want to make it clear that this is his little feet, look, I added little claws. That cat over there, I put three. Maybe this one I'll put four. There. Now I have claws. You got it? All righty, look at all these tails. They're kind of curved around. So you can add a tail, it's like it's behind him. So this tail curved that way. I'm gonna make this tail go up and curve around, watch. Up and curve around. So I have a nice big tail. I filled in my whole space over here. So I'm filling up my whole paper. I've used all four of my rectangles. You got it? Perfect. Now let's go ahead and add some lines so we can separate our cat and in those lines we can add patterns or shapes or whatever you want to but we're going to go ahead and add some lines too to separate it up. So pick one of these lines maybe zigzag, wavy, straight, I'm going to go right through the middle. Watch. I'll do a wavy line <clears throat> through the middle of my cat. You choose. Perfect. Maybe underneath that, I'll do a zigzag line. What are you going to choose? Perfect. And I can fit one more down here, and I can actually go all the way across. Like this one, I did a straight line all the way across. Maybe this one, I'll do little bumps. Bump, curve, 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 curve. Perfect. And look, we have some space up here. We're leaving some nice big spaces so we can add some dots or triangles, some different shapes. I think on this one, I'll do, I'll do maybe a straight line and a wavy line. There. You go ahead and finish giving yourself some spaces. If your cat's not as big as mine, then don't leave as many spaces. It's not a big deal. And the really fun part is to do the tail. <clears throat> I did a pattern. I'm going to do straight, wavy, straight, wavy straight, wavy, straight, and wavy. You 
you go ahead and pick your line. While you're doing that, um, I'll give you some um, cat history. In ancient Egypt, Egyptians used to really worship their cats. They were more than just pets to them. And when their family cat would pass away, they would mourn by shaving one of their eyebrows. Isn't that strange? I would never do that. Um, and they would also bury their, fam their cat in their family tomb. So they would bury it with their family members. They were that important to them that um, they would bury them with their family members. A little biology. This is interesting. <clears throat> Cats do not taste sweets. So even if your cat likes to eat ice cream, he doesn't know that it's a sweet treat. So he might just like it that it's cold or that it's um, different than its regular crunchy cat food. I don't know, but it cannot taste sweets. Isn't that interesting? Their chemical makeup does not allow them to taste something sweet like sugar or chocolate or candy or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> cats in the wild eat only meat. They eat only meat. So our pets, our pet cats, would probably like to eat only meat, but we don't really, uh, if it was up to them, they would eat only meat. But we have cat food, and so um, it just depends on what's in the cat food. And that's what they get to eat. So, also, have you ever heard of a cat nap? Well, a cat nap is really something that I would consider to be like a short, quick, light sleep. But we all know that cats don't take short, quick naps. They sleep almost all day long. In fact, they sleep two-thirds of the day. Hmm? You ever heard of two-thirds? That's sometimes in math, right? Um, let me put that into perspective for you. A nine-year-old cat is only awake about three years of its nine years alive. That is something. That's a lot of sleep. Um, also, cats' front legs, they are attached to their shoulder with a free-floating clavicle bone, so it floats around, and that allows a cat to get into tight, tiny spaces. So if their head can fit into it, their shoulders can also fit into it. That's why they can go like under a little fence or um, in between the house and something else. So their shoulders just kind of, they're a little bit floating, not like ours. We can't fit into every space like a, a little cat can. So um, that's all interesting biology of a cat. All right, have you got your tail all designed? Perfect. We're going to go ahead and color our cat in now. And guess what? You can use any color you want. Oh, I forgot something. Before you color in your cat, go ahead and add a few shapes in between your lines. Watch, I'll show you. I'll do a circle in this one. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do a... Oh, look, that's a dotted line. Maybe I'll do dashed in here. A bunch of little dashed lines. Look at all these, right? These are a bunch of shapes. Maybe on the tail, I'll go ahead and put a teardrop in some of them. It doesn't have to be in all of them, right? It's your cat. It's your design. It's your patterned pet. When you think you've got enough patterns, lines, shapes, designs, whatever it is you want in your cat, you can go ahead and get your assortment of crayons and you can start coloring it in. Ooh, now that our kitty cat is all colored in with all these beautiful colors, let's go ahead and add our little flowers around the edge. But before we do that, I want to give you a little bit of uh, language arts about cats. Um, cats adopt their language to adapt their language to their human in order to get what they want. And guess what? There is no universal language for meowing. Um, that's pretty interesting, right? Um, the meaning of a purr. Let's see. They purr when they're happy. Kittens purr when they're nursing. But they're also purr when they are sick or injured or dying. The meows really do mean don't go away, keep doing what you're doing, and that I need a little bit of attention. So a purr can mean a lot of different things in the little cat, in the language of a cat, right? So when your cat's purring, he basically is just saying, hey, I like what you're doing, keep doing it, and don't go away. Isn't that kind of cool? Um, that's, some, that's a cat fact I didn't know. 
All right, let's go ahead and do our flowers. These flowers are just large, medium, and small circles, and you can do them whatever color you want. So you might start out with maybe red and do a large circle. You can draw it first if you'd like. And if you take your glue, and you just start by gluing. Here's my large. I did it on all the corners. If you wanted to do them all red, that's fine with me. Maybe you want to do them all in a particular little pattern. That's good. Here's a blue one. I'll do yellow. <clears throat> and maybe an orange. You can do one, and if it's the perfect size, you can trace it. You can find something in your house that is the right size circle, if you'd like. Again, there's no wrong answers. Look, there I go, and there I go. Perfect. So then I'll do one a little bit smaller for each of my uh, circles. These aren't like super detailed flowers. They just look really, really nice around the edge of our paper and it's something that she um, that Laurel Birch does a lot in her pictures she adds a little bit of extra fun look here's a size medium that I like so I might take my other paper trace it or go around it you can add more detail to it if you'd like and maybe I want a yellow one I need one more. I'll do a green one. If you don't want to cut any more circles, you can always draw a circle in the center of your medium. All of that is good. Look, green. I'm not going to put blue on blue because it won't stand out. There. I'll put yellow over here and orange over here. And you see I did another one, a smaller circle. But if you don't want to, then you could just take your crayon and do a circle in each. Just like that. You can do different colored circles with your crayons. I'll let you get all caught up while you're doing that. I'll give you a little bit of math facts for cats. Um, cats make up over 100 different sounds and if we compare that to a dog a dog only makes up about 10 makes about 10 different sounds so a cat makes a hundred different a dog makes 10. Uh, cats are the most popular pet in the world and there are over 500 million domestic cats in the world and that means uh, pets domestic means pets uh, let's see cats are 95.6 percent tiger so cats are small tigers are big but they're all in the cat family just like a puma or a, um, <clears throat> a leopard um, things like that those are all in the cat family and they're just giant they're much larger than our pet cats okay let's see you guys all ready so i went ahead and made some leaves for my flowers they're just simple little leaves. I'll take my black crayon and watch. You go curve, curve. And in leaves, there are something called veins, just like we have veins in our body. Our veins pump the blood through our system. Well, the veins pump the water and the minerals and the nutrients through the plant. So I always like to add my veins. So you can draw a bunch, you can draw big ones. You can draw little ones. I put two on each. So two, four, six, eight. I have eight leaves. You don't have to if you don't want to. So go ahead and make the amount of leaves that you're comfortable with. Okay, remember you can always pause the video while you get all caught up. And we all you have to do is press play again when you're ready. Now that we almost have all of our leaves cut out, we'll be able to get started on gluing them. Here is number seven and here is leaf 
number eight. So all I did, so I didn't get a bunch of glue all over my background, was I put the glue where I wanted my leaves to go. Which is kind of on my border. And if you want them to stick off the page, that's fine. You decide. Here we go. Watch. One. Two. Three. Four, five, let's see, six, seven, and eight. Here, while you're gluing all your leaves on, I'll give you a couple of uh, cat world records. So the biggest cat on record's name is Hemi, and Hemi is a tabby cat from Australia, and he weighed in right over, are you ready for this, 46 pounds. Um, he passed away at 10 years old, but he was 46 pounds. That is a huge cat. Um, the oldest cat is named Cream Puff, and Cream Puff is a cat that um, is from Austin, and he lived to be right over 38 years old. Most cats live maybe 15, 18 years, but this cat was 38 years old. That is very old for a cat. And let's see the busiest cat. The busiest cat's name was Towser. And Towser was from Scotland. And he got, uh, got the Guinness Book of World Records for catching the most mice. And he caught over 28,000 mice. That is a lot of mice. Um, I hope you enjoyed making our uh, pattern pit today. Um, I did. Um, I just want to let you know that we'll be posting a new lesson every day um, from uh, 10 a.m. standard time for kindergarten, first, and second grade, each tied to an academic curriculum. Some lessons will be in visual arts and some lessons will be creative movement. So be sure to come back and make um, art with us tomorrow. If you're interested in supporting programs like this, you can donate to the Acadiana Center for the Arts. This is the nonprofit who manages our PACE program using the link in the description. Help, um, help keep our teaching artists working and share our videos and keep making art.